Mr. Timmermans? Your mic is open. Well, good, because we have to start. I've just been instructed. Uh, thank you very much. And first of all, let me say that um, I really welcome RD and its activities, and I think it is a great contribution to tackling, which is arguably one of the biggest challenges our generation and, next, and the next generation will face in Europe. Uh, the problem being that when we're doing fine, when things are going well, we are curious about diversity, we are happy with diversity, we celebrate diversity. When things are not going well, then diversity becomes a source of fear. And then we start to look for the dangers in diversity. And in the course of European history, we're always very quick to look for scapegoats, people to blame for our troubles. And traditionally, Jews and Roman Sinti are the first ones to be on the receiving end of that sentiment. And potent element of politics in Europe today. And people who fear go and look for confirmation of their fear. They don't go and look for proof to dispel the fear. And just think two seconds about what happened in Cologne on uh, New Year's Eve, which seemed to confirm all the fears people saw everywhere. A day after the allegations of mass sexual assault were made public, Cologne continues to search for the perpetrators and for answers. How could things get so out of hand? Police and witnesses continue to speak of a group of up to a thousand men groping and often robbing women at Cologne's main railway station on New Year's Eve. With Germany now announcing the country took in about 1.1 million asylum seekers in 2015, the New Year's Eve incidents are causing many to criticize Angela Merkel's open arms policy. And all of a sudden, everything was concentrated on the fact that apparently there was a fifth column in Europe, people with a different religion, with a different background, who were there to take away the civil liberties we had fought for for so long, who wanted our women to be in the second place. My point is this. If we do not mobilize people of goodwill who all too often, still today, are complacent about the issue, do not see how, for instance, hate speech on the social media is actually poisoning society. Do not see that if you don't contradict, if you don't take to court, if you don't act when in a football stadium uh, an African player is being treated as though he were a monkey. If you don't act immediately, this becomes something that becomes acceptable. De Ajax-supporter die bij de wedstrijd Ajax-Feyenoord een pop ophing... die Feyenoord-doelman Kenneth Vermeer moest voorstellen... heeft een stadionverbod gekregen. Ook wordt hij strafrechtelijk vervolgd. Vermeer heeft aangifte gedaan. En zo zag het eruit. If you don't speak out against anti-Semitism... if you don't speak out against uh, hatred against Muslims... then it becomes acceptable. Minorities in France also facing discrimination. A Jewish journalist, the first to carry out a tolerance test in Paris, walking 10 hours through the streets wearing a yarmulke, a traditional Jewish cap. He was also spat upon and became the victim of offensive comments. According to the latest report by the Council of Europe, anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim and homophobic attacks are on the rise in the country. The report based on data received before the Charlie Hebdo massacre in Paris last month. 
The chief of the Islamic Human Rights Commission tells us that the pressure on Muslims has gone up in Europe since those shootings. If we are capable, capable to stop the process of dehumanizing that's going on in our society every day, we will fight and win this. If we accept the fact that another person is seen as less human simply because of her or his religion or background, we will lose this fight.